Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to the class uh, Buddhism 408, Buddhist philosophy. Today's date is uh, August uh, 22nd, 2022. I think our seventh session of this program. Uh, hope uh, you all are doing great and uh, And last week we were discussing about the uh, very important topic, karma and rebirth. And today we move on to the to our schedule on according to our schedule. Today's discussion is about morality and ethics. So you know the two terms morality and ethics, morals and ethical behavior. Uh, in any given religion, any religion, uh, it talks about uh, moral behavior. There are certain things that, uh, that are considered to be uh, good and right and bad and unwholesome. And uh, usually uh, across the board, it's accepted certain things are good or moralistically right, good, and then wholesome. Like that, uh, accepted things. This, those are called morals and ethical behavior. And why do we need uh, moralistic or ethical behavior. That's very important. So usually the philosophy, Western philosophy, Eastern philosophy, or whatever type of philosophy, people, uh, philosophers try to uh, analyze things, try to uh, come up with theories most, most of the time. But here in Buddhist philosophy, we are focusing on another aspect also, come up with theories as well as uh, that there should be something to practice. So morals and ethics are practical aspect of the philosophy. I think it makes sense. When you, what, what you need to do in order to have happiness or in order to get rid of your suffering or to achieve certain freedom, uh, whatever the things that you intend to, uh, what kind of practice you should do. Then comes the topic, moral ethics. So in any religion, you find this aspect that there needs to be certain things to follow. Uh, good action, hmm? refrain from bad, things like that. So it's usually there, if, if, if only theory is there, then uh, it's like only one side, no practice, no practical thing. In Buddhist philosophy, one of the great uh, one of the great things in Buddha, Buddhist philosophy is it is not just theory. It's not just philosophy. It has the practical aspect. Philosophically, Buddhism accepts that we all are in suffering. We were discussing about this thing, the the unsatisfactoriness change and uh, non-substantiality. These are the things that we have to face with. So in order to get rid of these things, we need to do certain things. That is the practical aspect of Buddhist philosophy. So practice-wise in 
So this, these two things are very important. One side is theory, one side is practice. These, these are like the uh, two sides of the same coin, according to Buddhism. Uh, if you cannot practice what you preach, or if you cannot put your theory into practice, then it is useless. It's like a, uh, you have the uh, boat, but you don't know how to, how to, uh, you know, ride. <laughs> you have the boat, but you don't know how to ride. It's just like a theory, only theory without practice. Just like a boat without a rider. So Buddhism looks uh, in that way that uh, all our sufferings, all our problems could be eradicated, could be totally removed when you practice certain things. And that is why morals and ethics are very important in Buddhist philosophy. So that is that. And then <clears throat> what are these morals? What are these ethical behavior in Buddhist philosophy? The very basic thing is, uh, you know that there are five precepts. Uh, precepts are just like uh, certain uh, undertakings. Some, some people try to say they are rules. They are not rules given by Buddha or anybody. For a peaceful, non-violent society, these principles, these five principles are essential. What are those five principles? The first one is uh, not taking life, refraining from killing, not taking others, not just others, one's life too. Killing oneself and killing others both. Not taking life. That is the first principle. Second one is not uh, taking what is not given to you. In other words, stealing refraining from stealing, second one. Third one is sexual misconduct, refraining from sexual misconduct. You should allow other people to enjoy uh, their sexual life without harming them. Uh, fourth one, refraining from falsehood. You should not lie because if you lie, then you are causing disharmony in the society. Disharmony in the family, disharmony with your friends and others, and at large, disharmony in the society. And the last one, the fifth one, is uh, refraining from intoxicants. Intoxicants are, uh, you know, alcohol and other. Uh, toxic things. Refraining from them is helpful to bring good, uh, healthy society. Because if you keep drinking and doing all kinds of uh, drugs and other things, it causes problem to you as well as to the society, your dearest, nearest ones as well as to the larger society. So these five precepts, five principles are uh, like the backbone of uh, Buddhist morals, Buddhist ethical behavior. If you are an ethical person, you should not do these five things. You should try to uh, be away from as much as possible, away from these five things. Again, remember the five things, taking life, stealing or taking what is not given to you, refraining from sexual misconduct, 
falsehood, lying, and uh, taking intoxicants, which causes you indolence and negligence. So these five things are the basic. You don't have to be a Buddhist to uh, practice these things. For a healthy society, just imagine, suppose that when you are not killing anybody, not you are harming, not when you are not harming anybody's life, that means you are giving assurance. You are giving an insurance certificate to others of their life. That's life insurance, right? When you are not killing or not harming others, it means uh, just, like a, just like an insurance company, <laughs> you are providing safety, security for the others. And at the same time, you are showing your loving kindness and compassion to others. Not committing uh, bad things to, I mean, killing and organizing those things, you know. Uh, it's, it's providing safety and security to your close ones as well as to the big society. It's kind of providing security. And the second one also just like that same thing, it's property insurance. <laughs> second one, property insurance means insurance for the properties of other people. If you look at this way. So when everybody is doing like that, no stealing in the society, you don't have to worry. You don't have to have uh, security cameras and, uh, you know, big walls, big gates. <laughs> things like that, if everyone is just like that. So Buddhism teaches something like that. If you do like this, you are providing security, safety to others' life, others' properties. And the third one is also just like that. Uh, refraining from sexual misconduct means you are providing security, safety, and providing insurance for others' family life. Because based on this thing, there are many issues in the society. Uh, families become uh, you know, disrupted. Uh, so if you are not doing that thing, that means that uh, you are enjoying your family life and you are not harming others, the, the, the safety, security, and the uh, peace in other families. Refraining from sexual misconduct. The, the, the fourth one is again, uh, is also a kind of security, a kind of uh, insurance that you provide by not spreading falsehood. Uh, people, uh, every, anybody in the society, uh, we need to know the truth. Truth. So if you do not lie, that means you are providing, you are upholding that principle. I'm not a liar, I'm not going to lie. Huh? In, in moralistic issues, ethical sense, we can keep on talking about these things for a long time. Now, we do not need to do that here. And the fifth one is also providing, uh, if you follow that principle, it means you are providing social harmony. When you are drunk or intoxicant, you do not know what you do. You are causing uh, social unrest, social disruptions, fights, <laughs> various kinds of things. Yeah? So that means you are 
a responsible person. You become a responsible person by following these five precepts. So this is the basic in Buddhist philosophy. Practically, these are the things that you have to do. Theoretically, we were discussing these things that if you do bad, if you do bad, you will uh, reap the bad results, right? So if you do good things like this, you will create good karma. Good karma means that you are creating a good society for you to live in. Uh, that type of thing. And there are many other precepts like that in Buddhist, uh, Buddhist religion, Buddhist philosophy. They teach many other <clears throat> principles. You follow these principles not because somebody ordered you. The five precepts and the other principles, you do not follow them uh, because you are threatened by somebody, a god or somebody. No. Thing to do. If I behave like this, it will be for the benefit of me as well as benefit for others. That's very important thing. <clears throat> and in Buddhism, when you talk about morals, it says uh, refraining from the bad or akusala, unwholesome things, refraining from unwholesome things. Refraining alone is not enough. You have to refrain to begin with, but it is not just refraining is not enough. Like for, say for instance, you refrain from killing other beings, taking others life. That is very good, but at the same time, it is not enough. <laughs> Second, step is that you have to generate love and compassion towards others. So there are two aspects, that's what I want to emphasize. One is refraining from the bad things, akusala in according to Buddhism, akusala means the bad, uh, unwholesome, uh, bad actions, refraining from them. And at the same time, Second step is to develop good in you. Uh, refraining from them is, in a way, one can argue that you are developing the good. But you should know that you are developing the good. So in Buddhism, these two things are very important. Refraining from the bad and cultivating the good. See the two words, refrain from the bad, negative things. At the same time, you have to cultivate. Cultivate, you know the word cultivate. Uh, cultivate the good uh, in you. Because when you keep cultivating good in you, you become a 100% good person. That's moral. That's ethics. And... Uh, these are the two, two important concepts with the here in Buddhism. And uh, why do we have to do so? Why human beings have to be moralistic? Why do they have morals? We are not animals, that's why. Very simple answer. We are not animals. Even an, in animal lives, they have certain morals and ethics. It looks like, we do not know, it looks like. But for a better conditions to live in, we need morals and ethics. So Buddhism teaches, in, in the Buddhist context, Morals and ethics are uh, they are to uh, get rid of suffering. 
all these things are aimed at uh, you know attaining the perfection perfection means the nirvana that's another big concept in buddhism nirvana is the final attainment all these things we do to attain that level nirvana is the cessation of suffering we saw it in the in the in our previous classes uh cessation from suffering that is the, our big problem is suffering right so we do all these things in order to, to be away from suffering the away from the final release from suffering is called nirvana that's the term used in buddhism to identify that state of mind so <clears throat> all these actions are aimed at that highest thing now you might think that how how do i reach, reach nirvana by not killing others not killing others will not make you attain nirvana there are certain other things that you have to do that's the beginning uh, those simple precepts are just the beginning and then you move on to the second level and the third level without uh, getting into the first step you cannot step into the second one so in buddhism what you find all these ethics and moralistic behavior uh, in other words practice is uh, what you call it it's progressive progressive start from here and then go deep 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 like that progressive wow i mean you cannot do it quickly at once no so it's a progressive uh, process so all this moralistic behavior in the uh, end will lead you to the final release from <clears throat> samsara samsara is the cycle of birth and death you know when the buddha attained enlightenment at the age of 35 as you know now he uh, uttered a certain uh, statement because he was so happy to express his happiness he said it is recorded in the tripitaka that he said certain thing uh, what he said was oh i have been traveling in this samsara for innumerable period of time finding searching for the builder of this thing builder means the creator that the, the creator is uh, uh, somewhat uh, somewhat uh, contra- uh, confusing terms uh, whoever who builds this he 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 thinks that samsara is just like a house uh, the analogy of house who is the creator of this house that means samsara so i have been looking for the creator builder of this house and now i found him i found him who is the builder of this house who is the builder of this house my own desire my my own attachment attachment and greed is the uh, builder of this samsara now i discovered it i am not allowing you to erupt again i am not allowing greed and uh, attachment to overcome me now the uh, house is destroyed sansara is finished in in his happiness he uttered these words so there you find that uh, the freedom from suffering is the final goal of buddhism it is called nirvana and the person who has attained 
that level is called arahant. Those are now uh, actually English terms. Arahant is the person who has attained Nirvana. Uh, he, he is no more. He is no more means he will not be born again because away from the rebirth, in other words. So Buddhist philosophy focuses on these things. Uh, the world is full of hazards, right? Hazards. Hazards means suffering, full of suffering. So to be away from the full of suffering is to practice these uh, morals. Not just five precepts, there are many other. In Buddhism, you know, Noble Eightfold Path. Those things are to be followed, to be practiced in order to reach that highest level, which is called Arahant, Arahanta. So <clears throat> that is why morals are important. The, the, the path is given very nicely in Buddhist philosophy uh, that you have to first follow the uh, ethical principles. It's the, the journey starts with morals, ethics, ethical behavior. When you talk about ethical behavior in the Noble Eightfold Path, you find that uh, you have to refine your actions, refine your words. Uh, that's why it says Samma Vacha, Samma Kamant, Samma Ajiva. Three steps in the Noble Eightfold Path is connected with the morals. Uh, right actions, right speech, right livelihood. These things are related to your ethical behavior. When you say right actions, it means that you should not do those uh, five precepts, I mean, <laughs> refrain from those bad five things. Uh, refraining from them is right action. And speech, how do you refine your speech? You have to refrain from uh, lying. You have to refrain from, you know, uh, harsh, harsh, gross speech. You sh your, your words has to be loving words, not, uh, not uh, kind of, like the uh, daggers, verbal daggers, they say, you, the words that your tongue can be a weapon, a dagger, dagger means, you know, the dagger, like a sword, your words can be a dangerous weapon. If you speak bad, harsh words, divisive words, when two friends are enjoying their life, you can jump in the middle and, uh, you know, <laughs> talk uh, divisive words to both sides and uh, destroy their friendship. So, so refraining from divisive speech, useless chatter, not uh, important things, just chattering. <laughs> uh, so you have to refine your speech. These are moralistic things in Buddhism. And then, uh, right livelihood. You have to choose uh, uh, a good, wholesome professions, not uh, unwholesome professions. What are unwholesome professions? If you sell animals, if you do uh, human trafficking in modern day, or if you deal with drugs, illicit uh, things, drugs and alcohol, and uh, if you sell weapons, weapons of mass destruction as well as small-scale destruction, 
So if you are a uh, drug dealer, if you are dealing with arms and ammunition, intoxicants, those are not good professions. Those are not, uh, by, by, if you do those things, you are not earning your life uh, wholesome. You are not, you are, you are, you are, your profession is not ethical, not moralistic, according to Buddhist terms. So refraining from those things. You should choose your living by means of uh, good professions, farming, maybe government service, whatever. There are many, many like that not causing harms to others, not creating disunity and other things, suffering. So look at these things. So these three steps in the Noble Eightfold Path, what steps? Right action, right speech, and right livelihood. Livelihood means your profession, earn your life, make your life. These things have they, these three steps in Noble Eightfold Path is considered to be the uh, moral. In, in, in Pali, they call sila. Sila means moral, ethics. The sila is important, moral is important for you to go to the other step. Other step is uh, samadhi, second step is samadhi. Samadhi is the uh, concentration. In order to achieve the concentration, concentration means meditation, just to introduce you, uh, you need to have that ethical thing. Without being ethical, you cannot practice uh, bhavana or the uh, mental development. Hmm? That's why they are interrelated. So here right now we are focusing on the uh, morals and ethical behavior. It's very important. Uh, good and bad behavior, good and bad actions, you, have, you should be able to choose them. You see, the problem is sometimes what is good for me might not, good, might not be good for you. So there are certain questions here, but there are certain things accepted by everybody, that these things are good and these things are bad. So in Buddhist philosophy, you find lists of good and bad things that you should do. The basic principle is, because this is philosophy, philosophically Buddhism believes that uh, our problem is greed, craving. It is because of greed and craving that we continue to be born in this world, or continue to be in this sansara, in the cycle of birth and death. So we should try not to take place it again. Our actions, our behavior should be uh, aimed at stopping that, that continuity, continuously becoming that status. So one should do, you know, if we, our nature is desire and attachment, then we should practice detachment. We should uh, practice non-desire as much as possible. That is why in Buddhist uh, morality, <clears throat> ethical behavior, you find loving kindness, generosity. You have to be generous. You have to be compassionate because uh, our basic problem is that we have so much desire and attachment. We get entangled in many things, when we, we love possessions, we love to, you know, protect, 
protect our things. It is me first, uh, my body. I have to <laughs> uh, protect it. I have to, I'm attached to it so much that I will not allow anybody to touch me. Uh, I will not allow anybody to touch my possessions. I will not allow anybody to interfere with my, 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 you know? Uh, so uh, first you have to change your attitude. Uh, our attitude, correct attitude is that I have to detach from these things. If not, I will be trapped in this uh, entanglement. I will be born again and again because I'm attached. When you die with a lot of attachments, chances are that you may get rebirth again in whatever the way that you attached. So be careful. Uh, that's, that's how, I mean, I'm not asking you to do that, but this is how Buddhism talks, Buddhist philosophy. Buddhist philosophy teaches that uh, try not to be attached to things, attached to physical things as well as mental things. You know, attachment is two types. Sometimes we are attached mentally, which is very difficult to get rid of. Sometimes we are attached physically to certain things. I want to live in Los Angeles. Physically, I'm attached to here. I cannot live anywhere in the world. It's, I'm just giving you an example, not about me. Huh? Uh, something like that. And also, say for instance, okay, I'm ready to detach from Los Angeles. I go somewhere else in the world and uh, live there, but Physically, I'm detached from Los Angeles, but mentally, oh, think every day. Los Angeles is not like uh, here, wherever you are. Uh, oh, white road, whatever, facilities, oh, no, not people, crazy. <laughs> Things like that. You are mentally always suffering, thinking about Los Angeles, even though you are away somewhere. I'm just giving you a basic example. In the same way, we, people uh, sometimes uh, give up certain things, detach from certain things physically, but mentally, they hold on to those things so tenaciously, so strongly that they suffer so much. Think about your own life. You detach from certain, you give up certain things, and after that, <laughs> you suffer so much. Uh, mentally, you haven't given, given those things up. So when you give up certain things, you have to give up physically as well as mentally. Okay? Uh, very basic thing that we see in, in here. If you happen to see that, you know, homeless people are begging for a penny on the street. Uh, sometimes people give the and support them. When you say, for instance, you buy a uh, McDonald's and give to a homeless person, and the homeless person, you expect him to eat that thing that you gave the way you want. <laughs> you give, let's say, some some clothes, and you want that person to use them the way you want. That's wrong. That means you are mentally attached to those things. When you give up, you have to give up things both physically and mentally. That is detachment. Uh, that is what Buddhism talks about. Deta so what I'm trying to say is Buddhist morals and ethical behavior is aimed at detachment, total detachment from things. Because Buddhism accepts that nirvana, you can attain nirvana by totally 
totally getting rid of attachment, relinquishing all, all things, everything. That is the way. That's why morals and ethics are important in Buddhism. And uh, in day-to-day -day life, if you are moralistic or ethical, there is high regard for you. He is a person with such a good character. People say like that, right? Those are in day-to-day -day average life, ethics are very important. You should know when to talk, what to talk, how to behave. Hmm? Those are good moralistic ethical behavior. That is just to, you know, exist in this uh, society. But Buddhist morals and ethics are aimed at attaining that uh, freedom from suffering. That, that's the highest goal. So I think that's enough for today. <laughs> Uh, it's not uh, ethical for me to continue law. <laughs> uh, so, okay, uh, that, with that, I wind up and moral, morals and ethics of Buddhism. Uh, you can read more on the, uh, on the book, on the chapter. And do a little research if you are interested in these things. And uh, that's it for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me by email. Uh, that's it. See you again next week. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>